Hi everybody, this is the Planet Earth here. I wanted to talk to you guys today about all the methods that I have personally tried to cure or to uh, combat anxiety. I have tried exercising. I have tried vitamin D, A, K. I have tried taking magnesium supplements. I have tried over-the-counter methods. I have tried practically every kind of different anxiety melatonin I've tried vitamin D supplements I've seen if I have a little tumor on my adrenal glands I have tried everything therapy psychotherapy I have tried you know distracting my mind but anxiety before even before I took benzodiazepines I always had anxiety before I even took benzodiazepines and the problem is it's the same as before I took the medication you know when you have a biological DNA that allows you to have these anxiety disorder and allows you to worry obsessively over stupid stuff it's not fun. I've tried antidepressants. I've tried antipsychotics. I've tried buspirone with to no avail. I've tried Xanax. I've tried Valium. Valium doesn't work very well for me, even in higher doses. Xanax, I don't even like the way Xanax makes me feel. I feel like a zombie, and I just don't like Xanax. Uh, Ativan is a medication that seems to calm me down especially when I'm at my height of an anxiety attack or a panic attack. It always stops that panic attack. I've tried mood stabilizers such as gabapentin. I've had some adverse reactions to some of those medications. I've had uh, a lot of issues with these medications and just some of them never help me with anything and most of the time I actually have increased anxiety from these medications. I I am waiting for these new drugs to come out to see if that would help curb my anxiety. Um, I try to make myself tired by riding the bike every day. And that seems to work because it just makes me tired. But it doesn't seem to elevate the mood and make it better. Some days I am completely fine. And some days uh, are worse than others. And I notice that I seem to have anxiety more at night time than during the daytime. It seems to be more continuous during the night time than in the daytime. I have tried herbal supplements. I've tried different methods. I've tried comp CBT. I've tried every kind of therapy that I have been able to afford since 2010 at least. But nothing seems to curb my anxiety more than the medication that I take. And I've given all these different medications different times and tries. But I don't even want to be on medication at all. People say try medical marijuana. Well, the problem is Ohio is not legal yet. So I'm not going to try it. Second of all, medi the medical marijuana that I tried back in California made me experience paranoia and made me experience really bad levels of anxiety luckily I had my uh, medication to take the reason I don't try clonopin is I don't like the way clonopin makes me feel even on very small doses I seem to have issues with thinking clearly and I, I at some with clonopin I get so bad I can't even drive on that because of the memory impairment is so severe other issues I've had are waking up in the middle of the night with a pulse of 200 beats per minute or faster. And that is another issue that I have been having with anxiety and panic attacks. So there is a lot of issues going on that needs to be addressed obviously. And unfortunately through therapy and, and, and other means of therapy I've just not been able to find that medium boundary of having a little bit of less anxiety in my world. And my world is full of unwanted thoughts. 
my world is full of stress and these thoughts that come around they don't go away they just kind of they just they just don't go away it's nothing bad either it's just obsessive thoughts and and these are thoughts are sometimes very negative what if I die what if this happens what if that happens what if that happens what if that happens a lot of what if with anxiety disorder and I don't know why um, now I have been losing weight I've lost over 40, 50, 55, 15, 17, 18. I've lost about 15 pounds in a month. And I'm continuing to exercise regardless of how I feel. But anxiety is not fun to play with. It's just not fun. And people that, you know, people that don't suffer from anxiety disorders... They don't know what it feels like to to experience dread all the time. Every day of your life, there is some sort of dread. The only time that my anxiety seems to be very low is when I am driving. And that's the only time that I do not have an anxiety problem or seem to have an anxiety problem is when I am driving. When I am out there on the road with recording videos for my YouTube channel or going out to Detroit for some godly reason I could be in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods and have no anxiety but when I'm you know at home it's really bad or if I'm in a store it's really bad but if I'm in a, it's, here's what's weird this is what's weird and this is why I don't understand anxiety disorder why is it that when I'm in a store uh, like 200 miles away from home right let's say 200 miles away from home I don't have anxiety. But when I'm at a local store in my local city, I have anxiety. I don't understand that. I could drink soda with lots and lots and lots and lots of caffeine, even though I've been limiting myself lately not to drink so much and very little and even none for days. But caffeine doesn't seem to affect my anxiety disorder. But what I don't understand and what I don't get is... Why is it that when I'm in local areas, I have more anxiety than when I'm not? I, I, just, I just don't understand that. I don't understand the aspect of that. I, I honestly, I don't. That's another thing that I don't understand. Is it, is it, is it electronics? Is it the computer? Is it a lack of... 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 of girlfriendship it would what, what I don't know what it is and you know unfortunately I just don't know what it is I don't have the answer to it and I'm trying to find the answer to it but when I, my brain is absolutely must be distracted aka driving and and that's a serious you know that's serious you have to have a lot of cognition to to be able to drive you have to have a lot of, 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 of cognition stuff. And the problem with that is, I don't seem to have an issue with going and, 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 I, I honestly, I just don't understand it. I, I, I don't really understand why that happens and I just don't understand it. And then, like I said, when your brain is completely distracted, I don't seem to have anxiety when it's completely distracted. But when it's distracted, you know, my mind, and I'm doing okay. You know, I don't have a high heart rate. I don't have the unwanted thoughts. But when you're in a situation where you can't really escape to get where you need to go to because not everybody's rich, well, then there's a problem. People with like me that have anxiety disorder and like all some 400,000 people that look up anxiety attack videos, they have the same thing that I suffer with. And we don't really understand it, but it, it's there. But we don't understand it. And trying to control the symptoms of it is not easy. What the fuck? And controlling the symptoms, I think, is the hardest part. The symptoms of some sort of organic disorder or organic medical problem that we have and and doesn't seem to be an actual cure for it it just kind of you gotta hope for the best and then doctors that don't seem to care about the patients 
I think that's one of the worst parts, is the doctors that don't seem to care about the patients. Doctors, you know, they make money off of your misery, and that's what it comes down to. If you want to be truthful, most doctors that take these medication or give these medications to patients, you know, they're trying to make money off of you by giving you antidepressants, antipsychotics. You have to take a mood stabilizer with it, and you know what? Some people do good on it. Maybe it's psychosomatic, and some people just do terrible on it. I'm the kind of person that likes to look at if a doctor actually cares, and I don't think doctors, I don't think most doctors care about anything but their money pockets, you know that. I mean, these guys be driving Lamborghinis, they drive Ferraris and Porsches, you know, they're making money off your misery, period, if you like it or not. I mean, the only doctors that seem to seem to actually care are the doctors that do surgery on people. Doctors like that that save people's lives, they actually you know they're saving your life physically and I think that is why um, a surgeon should be respected I mean they make a lot of money yeah they like the hospital makes a lot of money off of uh, like I said your misery your medical disease but you know doctors took the Hippocratic Oath what the hell well doctors took a Hippocratic Oath to save you from whatever you're suffering with and unfortunately most of the doctors will take advantage of that and they don't actually care about the patient they only care about the money they don't care about the patients if they're withdrawing from medications they don't care about the patients if they're hearing voices they don't care about the patients if they have bipolar disorder and and it's funny that they can lock you up in a mental institution in this country throw away the key but not actually help you with anything and and that's a problem and that's what's wrong with this country, and it's wrong with the world because this is not the, this is not the only country that's doing this. There's other countries out there, you know. I'll give you an example. My friend Lai Candingo, in Australia, he's been trying to get help from every aspect of the mental health facilities in Australia, and no one has assisted him. No one seems to sit down and actually listen to him for once. Instead, they just continue to try to barrage him with different medications that give him the worst side effects imaginable such as Respidone and Seroquel all those medications do is fuck you up even more and if anybody doesn't want to believe me go look at all the side effects of those medications yeah so another topic I wanted to talk about was benzodiazepine um, people keep saying that you know I'm addicted to benzodiazepines well let me tell you something. You look at my blood work, you'll see that I'm only physically dependent on the medication. Maybe there is some mental capacity to it. But unfortunately, I've been taking it for so many years. Going off of it would be hell on earth, and I'm not in my right mind to go ahead and go to a detox facility. First of all, there is no detox facilities in Dayton, and the ones that there are cost a lot of money, and I can't simply afford it. Now, if I was a rich, multi-millionaire YouTuber, like some of those big stars like PewDiePie... I would have already gotten assistance, trust me, because they don't want to look bad. So, you know, so if somebody like PewDiePie had anxiety disorder, I think the medical field in this country would take it a little bit more seriously. But unfortunately, because these YouTubers make so much money and they don't seem to have mental illness, maybe they suffer from depression, but most, some people with depression don't have anxiety and some people with depression do. You can't change people, but... To help, you have the medicine to help people with an anxiety disorder, but unfortunately, you know, another thing that's funny is, you know, I don't even take, I don't even, I've never even, um, I took an, I think, what was it, oxycodone once in my life, and I never want to take it again because it made me so high, and I was like in a dream state for three days, so I'll never take oxycodone again, but you know, some people abuse these medications, and those are in a higher class of abuse potential than benzodiazepines class I think benzodiazepine was a class 4 or a class yeah class 4 medication and if not if that's what the pharmacist told me however um, some people take opiates for pain um, and those are actually a higher class than the benzodiazepines are so opiates are technically generally more abused than benzodiazepines I'm not defending my physical or mental addiction to benzodiazepines I'm just saying that people who suffer it, shouldn't they just be able to take the medication and try to live a normal life? You know, if I've been on, if I'm trying to get off this medication and I've had some of the most terrible effects that you could even think of, if you could only feel some of the side effects, 
and feel the withdrawal of benzodiazepines, you wouldn't want to get off of them so fast. But unfortunately, there's people out there that say you're a drug addict and you're in a drug abuser. But I'm not the only one out there. This is this is not the only one who gets called all those mean names. You know, you know what's funny is if you want to say you have an addiction, why don't you go look at your coffee in the morning when you take caffeine? You know, you want to call people drug abusers and, you know, drug addicts. Well, you know what's funny? You are a drug addict if you drink all that caffeine like I do. So technically you are addicted to caffeine. So technically you are abusing drugs. You want to get technical? It's just widely accepted. That's the only difference. Is caffeine is widely accepted in the world. But it is a stimulant and it is a drug, technically. And yes, it stimulates your brain. It makes you more uh, alert and focused. However, it is addictive because we drink it every day. Benzodiazepines, you know, they bind to the GABA receptors of the brain. And that's what happens. You know, and even if nobody's watching this video, I will continue to defend people with mental illness. As a matter of fact, there was a situation here. I saw a kid bullying another kid. You know what I did? Is I intervened immediately and I called the cops on them. I'm not going to allow it. If I see bullying, I just call the police on them. I don't give a fuck. What anybody says, I will always call the police when I see bullying. You know, it's 2016. I think the bullying stage needs to stop. I think it's ridiculous, to be honest with you. And I'll just keep calling the police on anybody who keeps to try to bully people. You know, I see little kids getting bullied by other kids. And I remember my, my years when I had these issues. And I'm just not going to allow it. And that's, you know, and, and the main thing I think is what causes anxiety disorder is childhood trauma. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons for um, anxiety disorder building up in some people. I think that's the biggest one. And, and you know what's funny is I've never even done illegal street drugs in my life. Technically, no, I've not. I mean, America, medical marijuana in California is not legal. So technically, I've never done an illegal substance, and I never will. And as I told my subscribers before, I don't do alcohol. I don't like the taste of it either. And if you take alcohol with benzodiazepines, you can get very sick and die. You can, you can, you can hurt yourself really badly doing that. And it's been shown a million times. So I try not to take benzodiazepines with alcohol I don't like the taste of alcohol I don't like the taste of anything to do with alcohol I don't like the way so that's that's the reason why I don't do that you know I can only do so much I'm a small youtuber I don't have the popularity enough to help people with anxiety disorders but if I did if I did if I had the popularity oh my god would I call people all over the world to try to get people to understand that this disorder is more serious than you think it is. And unfortunately, some people have been have, have been trying to, uh, uh, to, to help people with anxiety disorders. But until you experience an, a panic attack, until you experience something like that, to experience the, the, the scariness and the misery that people will receive while having a panic attack, you can never understand what it feels like. And I, I just... I don't wish it, but I kind of do. I wish a doctor one day would just uh, experience um, a, a panic attack. You know, if a doctor could experience a panic attack, I can guarantee you they'd be more willing to help people who are experiencing them. Because it's the scariest feeling on earth. It is without... Let me tell you, it's equivalent of having a heart attack without the heart attack. It's like the symptoms are there, but you don't have the excruciating chest pain. So that makes you panic because you don't know if you're going to die. Or it's like somebody's holding a gun to your head. And and you know what? You can only do so much. The people that are on my channel that do suffer from this anxiety disorder, they can only do so much. They can only do so much. You know, there's just nothing you can do. Like, like there's things you can do, like getting, you know, if you have a mild disorder of the anxiety... You know, it's completely manageable by some medication or, you know, just going out and exercising. Yeah, of course. But if you have a severe physiological anxiety and generalized anxiety and you suffer from the panic disorder and, and, and whatever it is, panic, period, it's hard to live day by day with it because you're always worried about something stupid. And it's, it's unbelievable, but you're always worried about something so stupid and trivial 
but it goes in your mind like it's a five-star alarm. You know, like GTA with the five-star cuff. That's what's happening in our brains. Our fireworks are going off uh, prematurely. You know, it's, 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 it's like seizuring without the seizures, except your mind is just going all crazy for no reason, and there's no reason for it, but it thinks of it as some sort of extreme threat. But there's no actual reason. It just happens. So we don't. I don't understand the physiological aspects of an anxiety disorder. But what I do know is, they say it's treatable, but it's not without medication. Not if you're having multiple panic attacks a day, multiple hospitalizations for the anxiety disorders, worrying about stupid things that you can't control, and that's the, the biggest one. Is worrying about stupid things that you really can't control. And unfortunately, unfortunately, that is all you can do. Huh. This is a strange. Kind of weird. Hmm. Never seen that before in GTA. Well, like I said, that that is that's what the problem is. And you know, you can only do so much. You can honestly only do so much with having the panic attacks and the high heart rate, the pulse, the blood pressure, the scariness, the feeling like dying, you know, the calling of emergency services. You know, if you know if you have a daughter or a son or a brother or a sister or yourself and they suffer from anxiety disorder. It's not fun to make fun of them if they're in a situation like that and they're being made fun of. I hope you would defend them very seriously. If anybody's suffering from bipolar or schizophrenia, they need to be taken seriously and needs to be treated with medication, therapy, and whatever else you can do. Taking them out, letting them do stuff, you know, seeing the world instead of just being locked up on the computer all the time. And that would probably help them. But unfortunately, you know, I'm doing my exercise and that's all I really can do. There's really nothing else I can do here. Because it's always cold in Dayton, Ohio. I don't know why, but it's always cold here. It, it seems to never get warm here. It's May already and we're in the 40s at night. And it's just, it's miserable. It's, a, it's not a good place for people who come from California. For me, I, you know, I lived in, lived in Marina Del Rey. And, and I'm sure that's not helping my anxiety disorder. You know, having all these cold days, not being able to warm up and get out and do stuff. I'm sure that's not helping. So, this is where I used to live. And, and I'll be honest, you know, I had some anxiety attacks. But because I had access to a vehicle, you know, I could always get out and go do stuff. So if I did have a panic attack, it wouldn't last very long. Then the rest of the day, I'd be very I'd be very distracted driving on the 405 or whatever. And, and just chilling. But, you know, it's hard. it's hard to do. It's... It's it's not easy, you know, living with this disorder. You know, we do, but it's not easy. And unfortunately, I can't cheer everybody up. And as I've said in my my past videos, I can't make everybody happy. You know, people hate me. They hate my guts. They hate my voice. You know, there's nothing I can do about it. They just hate me. They actually hate me. And they admitted it that they hate me. They absolutely hate my guts. And, and I cannot change that. But that's not why I'm here. My purpose here is to... I, I try to make people laugh. I, I try to I try to help people when I can, but it's you're not always there to to win the situation. And you know, you can't always win the situation. But my my channel is to play video games, it's to have fun, it's to distract people, you know. It's to distract people, it's to you know, just it's a whatever channel. It's not dedicated to one specific thing. And I guess that's why I always lose a lot of subscribers when I upload different videos. Is, you know, some people subscribe for my driving videos. And then some people subscribe because they like to see my anxiety videos. But then they see my driving videos and they're like, ah, shit, fuck this. And they unsubscribe. They just don't like me. You know, like, that's okay. You can't please everybody. No channel can. And no YouTube channel ever could please anybody. But that's my goal here is to talk to people if I can. If people want to talk, I would usually call them. Even if I became, even if I had become some sort of big YouTuber, I would still talk to people when I could. 
I'm not an asshole like these other, you know, some of these other YouTubers that are just in it for the money. Yes, I monetize my videos, but it's not enough to live off of, and it's definitely not enough to pay any bills, but it's better than nothing. But, I, you know, the exposure that I almost had was on a video from ABC 2020 called Anxiety and Panic Disorder. Unfortunately, the executive producer overrid the... Uh, the senior producer or whatever the vehicle producer producer period she wanted to have me on 2020 for a 20 minute segment and unfortunately they wanted to go with the story of a woman who had a very bad phobia so you know I can't win on that one and you know you just not you know you just gotta wait for that good opportunity for it to happen and until it does and so I can reach out to more people and Maybe possibly get help for my anxiety disorder, which I seem I can't here in Ohio, and I didn't get it in California. I didn't get it in Texas, so obviously there is no help for me, um, you know, long term. I mean, I could detox from the Ativan, but I'll still have panic attacks, and honestly, I don't want to have panic attacks. I when I was detoxing off this stuff, I pretty much was off of it at a point, but my panic attacks soared through the roof. I tried different medications. I tried everything imaginable. I, I probably spent over three hundred dollars in different stuff to try to take while I was detoxing for those few months off the Ativan and everything. It just nothing worked. Nothing worked. And my doctor did some DNA testing and told me that I have what's called a MTHFR, which is a lack of folic in the brain, uh, and it's a biological problem that seems to make anxiety extremely worse. And, you know, I also have biological anxiety. My parents have the same thing. At least my mom did. On my mom's side of the family had really bad anxiety. I talked to my uh, gr grandpa who said, man, she used to have some really bad attacks all the time. So, unfortunately, you know, I'm suffering with this. And I'm trying to live with it day to day. At least it's not the worst thing in the world, but to suffer with it, just to worry about everything, it really sucks. And... You know, I'm, I will always try to be here for my subscribers, whether they hate my guts or not. I am always try to be there for people, and I will continue to do so. So anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. This has been the Planet Earth here, and I will continue to try to find the cure for it. And if I don't find the cure for it, I'll keep asking around to see what could actually help curb this anxiety besides this. <laughs> One person said, why don't you just get some pussy? I said, well... Uh, I'm too fat. No girls are going to find me attractive right now anyway. I, you know, I could, but I don't pursue because I just, I'm too chubby. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't, and, and, and even then I didn't want to, I don't want to put misery in their lives anyways. I don't want to do that. So, I don't try to date anybody. I just don't want to, to date anybody because... I'm over the dating game, you know, I just don't want to have a girl anymore, unfortunately. I just don't want to, you know, I, I mean, there's opportunities there for me to get married, but I don't want to. I don't want to do anything like that. I don't want to, I just don't want a woman or need a woman in my life. I just don't want one. But that's how I feel, you know. You know what really ruined it for me is being cheated on. So that one, that one really ruined it for me. So I just don't want to date. Unless she was really nice to me, maybe that'd be a different story. But women like to cheat on men all the time. So, you know, men cheat on women too, but mainly women cheat on men. It's surprising, but, you know, women have that power over men. So I always, I've always assumed, you know, that they could do whatever they wanted. You know, they can, they can, they can do a lot of stuff, you know, they can, you know, all they got to do is look pretty and they can get pretty much whatever they want and we can't, you know, women have an advantage over that in a way. If I was a really hot woman with big old breasticles, I mean, don't you think that I'd have more subscribers and viewers and all that stupid stuff? Look at every single vlogger, look at all the pretty vloggers and the hair and makeup tutorials. As a matter of fact, I have a subscriber. And she is absolutely gorgeous. She does makeup tutorials. And she lives in Ohio. And she's absolutely gorgeous for her. She's gorgeous and very beautiful. And she, she does makeup tutorials. And she looks like a five-star goddess. Unfortunately, though, 
she looks better without her makeup, honestly. You know, she she has some acne, but she is absolutely beautiful the way she is. And, and, and unfortunately, you know, she does makeup tutorials, and she looks really good when she puts the makeup on. But natural beauty, I think, is a lot better. And honestly, she is gorgeous. I don't know if she's ever watching my YouTube channel, but she is just, oh my god, gorgeous. She's a very beautiful lady, and... You know, I think she's going to go a long way with her makeup tutorials. Because she can do some badass shit. Even for, you know, even, you know, she can do some nice tutorials on the makeups. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, most most men are just like assholes and they treat the women like shit. And I don't think that's right. And I don't think it's moral. Um, you know, women, some women like abusive men, some women don't. And it's sad that when they're young, they like the abusive type of man. The, the, the long run, though, is eventually they're going to want to settle down. And the problem is, you know, these guys are going to treat them like shit. And I think that's wrong. Don't women want a guy that cares about them, that will love them when they wake up in the morning instead of hitting them or calling them names or hurting them physically? You know, I mean, wouldn't you want a man that actually cares about you instead of just... A guy who abuses and, 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 and stuff like that. I mean, if you know, I've seen this happen a few times. I've wanted to assault. I've actually wanted to assault some of the men that I've seen abusing women on the bus. One really got to me was back in uh, California. One of the men were really abusing the hell out of this woman. Slapping her, throwing her off the bus. A lot of men in there were getting very defensive. You know, saying, you keep doing that shit, we're going to kick your ass. And I got to the point where I was getting so mad seeing that woman being abused and crying her eyes out uh, that I was going to snap too. But we were all were going to snap, actually, to be honest. I think the whole charade of, of people were going to snap. And he stopped doing it, and they didn't snap. But, I mean, that's not right. And, and you know what? That also causes a lot of trauma in women too. So it's a 50-50 in relationships. It's always a 50-50 in relationships. It should always be that way, but most men don't agree, and most women just want a man who cares about them. Call them pretty in the morning, you know? That's all women want, and that's that's all I could provide. You know, I'm a chubby guy now because depression, cold in Ohio. I was a lot skinnier in California, but the cold, man, you can't go out there and exercise. It's zero degrees in the winter here, and you just can't exercise at that temperature. It's too cold. So anyways, that's all I have to talk about for my subscribers. And I'll keep making videos, but yeah, that's all I can talk about right now. And I just wanted you guys to watch GTA while I talk about this shit. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching. This has been the Planet Earth here. Let me just crash the car real quick. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and crash it. Here we go. Alright, well, he said fuck this shit, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go.